Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm gonna to show you how to color grade your D-Log footage that you recently shot with your Osmo Pocket 3. I'm gonna show you how to do this in Adobe Premiere and also DaVinci Resolve. I am gonna to touch on the oversaturated blues a lot of people are getting. I'm gonna show you how to bring that back down and make them look a little bit more natural. So please join me in this program, hit the subscribe button, and let's get started. Okay, so let's jump into Adobe Premiere. As you can see, I have a number of clips selected already that I'm gonna show you how to color grade. These were all shot in D-Log. So first we're going to start with this shot. These are just some daytime shots that I recently shot here in Chicago. So we have a landscape, we have me kind of walking and talking, and then we also have another landscape which has a little bit of blues that were shot during the day too. So let's start with this one here. So what you're gonna to wanna to go to is go to the Lumetri Color tab. And this is a great place to start. Most of the time I'm shooting at 5600 Kelvin on my Osmo Pocket, so that is daylight. But let's say my color temperature was off a little bit or if I wanted to warm this up a little, I could move the tab over. Or if I wanted to cool it down, I could bring it back down a little bit. I personally lean more towards the cool tones, but this is all your preference. Right now I'm going to just leave it over to the cool just a tad. And next I'm going to go to my curves. This is really where you get to make the image pop a little bit more. So I like to start with a standard S curve. So I'm going to just bring down the shadows a little bit and we're going to bring up the highlights. As I mentioned, when you film in D-Log, D-Log is giving you the most latitude in the highlights and the shadows. So in post, we really want to just pull these back out and S curve is a great place to start with that. So now I'm going to go to the back to the basic correction. I'm gonna add a little bit more saturation because the D-Log isn't as saturated as I might like it. And we're gonna take a look at that. That's starting to look pretty decent. Just play it back here. Cool slow motion shot of a bird going by. And now we are gonna actually play with the colors a little bit more. So there's two ways to do this. You can go to the curves and click on the colors that you want to enhance. So say I want the blues and I wanna add a little bit of blues to my shadow, I can bring this up and it's gonna bring blues into my shadow, or say I wanna do the opposite. So if I do this way, it's gonna bring more greens into my shadows. I personally don't like doing it this way. My preference is to go to the color wheel or the color match. And this is a good way to introduce different colors into your shadows, midtones, and highlights. So again, I like to add a little bit of blues. So in my shadows, I'm gonna just pull this over towards the blues a little bit more. As you can see, it's adding a little bit of blues to my shadows. Um, here's a full screen version, so you can kind of tell a little bit more. And then I don't normally mess with midtones because midtones it pulls from the highlights and the shadows, which I don't like. Now we're going to go to the highlights, and I'm going to just add a little bit of glow to the highlights. We're going to just warm up the highlights a little bit. And as you can see, our shot here is getting a little bit more cinematic than it was before. And if you want to see the preview of this, you can turn these all off and now we're gonna go back to what we looked like before so that's kind of where we started at another way to do this is to do it as an adjustment layer so i'll show you that real quick here so you can bring in an adjustment layer and bring this over top and then do all your color grading on the adjustment layer and it's going to affect anything below so let's say i just want to copy and paste these attributes to the adjustment layer like so, and then I'm going to just reset this so then it's kind of adding it there. And then you can just toggle this on and off to see what difference you are making, which isn't dramatic, but you know, it does add a lot to put these in the cool blue tones. And yeah, I think that looks pretty good. So now let's move on to our next clip. And if we did just have all clips that looked very similar, you can grab this adjustment layer and you can pull it across and it's going to apply that grade to all the clips that are underneath it. So, now we got it on this clip, we added it to this clip of me walking and it should add it to the next clip as well. So yeah, that's a cool way to kind of easily drag and drop and see what it's gonna look like. Firstly, I'm gonna grade this a little bit different. So now we're gonna go back into here and I am gonna start with the color temperature and the color temperature looks pretty good. Maybe I wanna warm it up a little bit. Normally on skin tones, I like to warm these up. So I'm gonna start there and then like I said, I'm gonna go to the curves and just add a slight S curve to this. I don't wanna get too dramatic because if I bring my shadows down a lot, I'm gonna lose a lot of my detail, which I do not want because it's already a little bit darker of a shot. By the way, on the Osmo Pocket 3, I do shoot at negative three. So my highlights are not clipping. I find that to be a really good sweet spot. But yeah, that curves does add a decent amount. 
which I think it's starting to look pretty good. And then, yeah, once I go into the color wheel here, the shadows, I am going to add just a little bit of yellow. I think this is going to really kind of give it that rustic look and bring out these lights and also the rustic look on these bridges here. And again, if I wanted to color match this to this clip right here, not a problem at all. I can just turn off this adjustment layer, bring in a new adjustment layer, drag it over, and I can copy the attributes there. And now I can paste them over here. And now it's a little bit more cohesive. So the, now we're having a little bit more yellows into the tones and it matches a lot better. And again, if I wanted it on this clip as well, I can just bring this adjustment layer or copy it and drag it over as well. And now everything's kind of cohesive, which makes for a nice piece. Okay, now let's move on to the next clips here. So now I'm going to get into the nighttime shots. Um, I shot these beautiful shots at night the other night in Chicago of the river. And yeah, they turned out awesome. As I mentioned, I'm always very impressed with the DJI Osmo Pocket 3 and the capabilities of it. It's truly incredible. I was still color balance for daylight, so that's my fault. But I do like to make this a little bit more on the blue tones because at night I feel like I associate blue with the moon and the sky at night and the night sky and it generally looks a little bit better. So we're just going to bring this color temperature down. As you can see, that's already starting to look awesome. And I am going to just add an adjustment layer here so I can show it to you quickly on and off, toggle it on and off. So we are going to bring this back down here. Cool, it's starting to look pretty cinematic. And now I am going to mess with the exposure a little bit. I'm going to just bring it up a hair, go down to our curves and introduce a little darkness, a little highlight. And as you can see, it's really starting to pop. I love the curves. So adding an S-curve can really add a whole lot to your shot, which is incredible. Yeah, let's go down here and we're going to just introduce a little bit more blue into this shot and yeah that's starting to look really good so here's kind of the clip right now after color grading a little bit again it doesn't take much to really make this image pop and that's why i love so much about the d log so let me just toggle this on and off perfect so you can see the before here and the after there and yeah it's starting to look really great so now let's get into the blues this is a big problem i find with the osmo pocket which i wish wasn't there but there is a workaround so all right, so now I'm here in these blues and this is a good clip to showcase. As you can see in the D-Log, the blues are already super saturated, which is a problem because when I add a curve to this, you're gonna see the blues are really gonna be in your face. And honestly, I don't like that look. I don't think it looks natural. So it is a little bit of a problem. This shot is okay because there isn't much other saturation I wanna add. So. You know, if I add a little bit more saturation, the blues do pop a lot, but this shot you could just bring it back and it's probably going to be okay. It's starting to look good, um, but let's just bring these back to 100 and I'll show you the workaround, which I find to work really well. Actually, I'll show it to you on this clip here because I think this clip, because it has a lot of greens and browns also associated with it. I think it works really well for this. We're going to bring up the saturation a little bit because I do want to see a pop in the palm trees. Add my curve. So again, add an S curve. I just had a slight S curve here because we don't need too dramatic. Here was already the morning, so you get long shadows. So it's already going to be a lot of contrast. If we come down here, this is the hue versus saturation bar. And this is really where we could adjust those blues and make sure that they're under control. So. If I want to just affect the blue area, I can either do this and then tap up here and now it selected that blue area and I could bring it down or I could bring it up if you want to really go crazy. I'm going to just bring the blues down to make them look a little bit more natural. Maybe I'll bring out the curves just a hair. Yeah, that's starting to look really good. But as you can see, this is an easy fix to fix the blues that come off of the Osmo Pocket 3. Cool, so that's kind of the basics of color grading within Adobe Premiere. I love Adobe Premiere, it is my main source of editing. However, I know a lot of people use DaVinci Resolve, so I did want to showcase a couple clips in DaVinci Resolve so you guys could see that too. 
Okay guys, so now we are in DaVinci Resolve. Now DaVinci Resolve looks a lot different than Adobe Premiere and I am in their color tab. So you get to the color tab right here after you add in your footage to the timeline. DaVinci Resolve works on nodes, which is a little bit different, but it is cool because I can see an effect one right after another. So if I add a new node by option S, this is a good way and nodes you could easily delete and go back to, which I love. So now I have this clip here and I am going to start with an S curve. So if you click over here and then go to the first tab, this is where we're going to add our S curve. Now DaVinci Resolve, I feel like you don't really have to add a whole lot to make it go far. So that looks pretty good. And if I toggle this on and off with Command D, you could see we're really starting to add those highlights and shadows back into this image here. Now, the next thing I want to do is add a little bit of saturation. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to find the saturation tab, which is at 50 and probably bring it up to about 50, 60, maybe 64. That looks pretty good there. And same thing in here, you can mess with the color temperature. So if I want it warmer, if I want it cooler, I could do that here. I am going to warm this clip up a little bit. And contrast, I already added that with the S curve. But yeah, that's starting to look pretty good. If I wanted to add in a little bit of different colors into my shadows or highlights, I could do that right here as well. So honestly here, maybe we'll just add a little bit of blues into the shadows. I think that looks pretty good. And then the highlights, maybe we'll just warm them up a hair. And yeah, so if I toggle this on and off, you can kind of see the before and after. And yeah, it's starting to look pretty good. So now I do want to show you guys a night clip in here because it is a little bit different. Yeah, we're going to go in here, kind of add our add a new node with command, sorry, with option S. Add an S card, bring those shadows down, bring the highlights back up. And now we're going to go over here and I really want to add a little bit of blue into the shadows. That's starting to look good. And again, warm it up a little bit. And yeah, that's starting to look pretty decent. And there is the before and after. Again, it doesn't take much. We're just adding a little bit to emphasize the image a little bit more and kind of take control of how we want to color grade it. So finally, let's talk about the blues in DaVinci Resolve. I'll bring up another clip. This looks like a good clip, which has a lot of blues in it. This is another shot out of Chicago from downtown. So here, if I add the S curve, which maybe that's pushing a little too much. So yeah, that's our before and after. And then I will add a new node here just so you can see the blue saturation. So when I add the saturation, actually I'll add it back on this node here. So let's add our saturation. Let's bring it up to, I don't know, that looks pretty good for everything but the blues. So now if I go over here, I am going to go back to my curves and we're going to go until we find hue versus saturation. This is where you want to be. As you can see, there's a big spike in the blue and that's because the blue is the sky and it's taking up most of the color space. If we just click on the blues here, it's going to be right in the middle. That looks pretty good. And yeah, same thing. We can either bring them up or bring them down. In my case, I'm going to bring them down just to make them look a little bit more natural and that's starting to look pretty good. Just like that, maybe the shadows for this one, I could bring up a little bit. So yeah, just bring that, pump that up and that's starting to look pretty good. But anyways, that's a really fast demonstration of how to color grade in DaVinci Resolve. You'll be a color grading expert in no time. Awesome, well thank you so much for tuning in to my tutorial. I really hope you learned something. If you have any questions, please ask them in the comment section below. Please like and subscribe to my channel. It really helps me grow and I really appreciate it. And until next time, peace.